Bible. Let's make this confession as we always do. Say it out loud. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I do what it tells me to do. And I love my Bible. So I make this as a confession. I will meditate therein both day and night, Monday through Friday, on a chapter in the morning and a chapter in the evening. And because I do, my life is blessed. It's no more a mess. Now everything I touch, everything I touch, now turns to success. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to receive a word from you. We gather ourselves, particularly at this time every year, to hear from heaven. I believe you've given me words to speak, scriptures, words to say that will set the course for us over these next months and years to come. So give us eyes that see and ears that hear and hearts that are open and receptive to your word for us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit moving in and out every aisle, through the airways, in every room where this is being received. We thank you for it in advance, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, open with me in your Bible to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20. We're starting a new series that's called Elevation. This is the first part, and the subtitle today is What's On Your Next Level. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, the Bible talks about Jehoshaphat and the people of God being surrounded by a number of armies. They were in a very dire and desperate situation. I don't know how this message this morning finds you today. We know there's a lot going on in our country, and it could be that you've experienced some very difficult times, some very desperate situations, and I believe I have a word from the Lord for you. Jehoshaphat did as we have done over the past several months, a couple of months at least. We've been seeking the face of God in the midst of a famine, in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of, of a crisis, crying out to God. Literally, 2 Chronicles chapter 20 said that Jehoshaphat and all of the inhabitants of Israel, they fasted and they prayed, asking help from the Lord. How many of you all need God's help in your life? I don't know about you. I got both hands up for that. God, we need you. We need a word from you. Well, sure enough, they declared a fast and the people fasted. And I know many churches are starting tomorrow for 21 or 30 days of prayer and fasting. And, and I challenge you, this is a good time for you to be seeking the face of God. As you hear this message from the Lord, I challenge you, take it. Don't just, you know, take it and, you know, put in your mind, well, I hope so. No, examine it. Study these scriptures. Read your chapters. Find yourself in this prophetic word, and I believe it'll shape your year from this day forward. Amen? Well, sure enough, a, a young man, the, the people prayed, and, and Joseph had had a very anointed prayer, and it got quiet, and the Spirit of God came upon a young man named Jehaziel, and he said, you will not need to fight in this battle. The battle is the Lord's <laughs> and not yours. Amen? And, uh, you know, the people rejoiced over that. They got a prophetic message even before the battle was even fought. Even before we step out into this new year, how many of y'all know it's important to get a prophetic word from God? What God knows is the end from the beginning. Well, just after this prophetic message was given, Jehoshaphat said something in verse 20 that I want to read uh, for your benefit. He said, so they arose after hearing this prophetic word in the morning, and they went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. As they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and he said, hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Hear me. He said, believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Then he said, believe his prophets 
and you shall prosper. I believe in in the same voice, in the same authority. I stand before you today to say, hear me, Faith Family Church, and those that are listening online, wherever you may be, and a part of whatever family you may be of, hear me today. I believe that we've got a prophetic word from the Lord. The first thing he said to them is to believe in the Lord your God. If you don't remember anything else from this message today, I challenge you, no matter what you are facing right now in your body, in your finances, in your marriage, in your relationships, on your job, anywhere in your life, if you are facing an obstacle that's in front of you, if you're concerned about what 2021 will look like, I am saying to you, hear me, and my word to you is this, believe in the Lord your God. He's brought you too far to leave you right now. Believe that God has got good in your life. David said in Psalm 27, he said, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I challenge you to believe in the Lord your God. Believe that you will see good in the days that are before you. You know, the... The, uh, the elected president of the United States, you know, he, he came out with, you know, he said that the darkest days are ahead of us. Well, if you believe that, then, man, you should batten down the hatches, kind of buckle up and, you know, kind of hope that at least 2021 is a little bit better than 2020. But now I'm not saying believe the president. I'm saying believe in the Lord your God, that even if it gets darker in the world, it's going to get lighter in your house. Come on. It's going to be bright in the church. But the second thing he said was believe his prophets and you shall prosper. There's that word prosperity again. Again, I don't know how you feel about that, but God is interested in your financial well-being. Not just your physical well-being or your spiritual well-being. One of the greatest attacks that the enemy has against any believer is in the area of finances. He'll fight you harder in, in, in that area more than any other area in your life. But notice what this word says. He says, hear me. Believe in his prophets. And what the prophetic word has been spoken says And it's going to be financially beneficial for you. How many of you all could stand to be financially benefited in your life? Well, My challenge to you is I'm about to deliver to you a prophetic word. I don't stand in the office of a prophet. I do stand in in a five-fold office. I'm a pastor and a teacher. But I recognize a prophetic message when I receive one, whether I'm hearing it uh, from someone else or whether I'm hearing it from the Lord. And what I'm about to share with you, I believe I heard from God. I remember the moment that it came to me. I didn't hear him with my outside ears, but I believe I heard it very clearly in my heart. It says this, this year, the year 2021 will be known to you as the year of elevation. For I am bringing you up to a new level and higher heights. I am exalting you, Faith Family Church. I am picking you up and throwing you beyond the usual marks. Elevation is the word for you. It went on, he went on to say, so humble yourselves before me, says the Lord. Become as humble as a little child. For I am intending to use you, Faith Family Church, greatly in my kingdom. Elevation is in this due season for you. That's what you will see. So purpose to remain Humble before me, says the Lord. Let's lift up our hands and receive that 
from the Lord. Thank you, Father. Go ahead and open your mouth. Thank you, Lord. We receive that as if it were you that spoke directly to us in the name of Jesus. That word came to me for you on September 28th at 1034 p.m. And I'm going to talk about it throughout this entire month. We're going to examine what he said and look at some scriptures as it were, as they have come to my heart about. But specifically for today, I want to talk about and challenge you with this thought. What's on your next level? God is actually bringing you up to a new level and to higher heights. But I challenge you today with what is on your next level. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul, he was writing to the church in, uh, uh, he was writing to the church in Corinth, and he said, it is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. And then in verse 7, he said, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Now in the weeks to come, I'm really going to dive into 2 Corinthians chapter 12 in this particular passage because he uses an expression which I'll never forget. I was in Bible school uh, many, many years ago. Actually, man, it seems like a long time ago. And one of my instructors took time to really impact our hearts about what this Greek expression, exalted above measure, really means. The simplest and fastest way that I can say it is Paul was saying, unless I should be picked up, which means exalted, to be lifted up, right, above measure, and thrown beyond the usual mark. If you could think in the Greek sense, the Greek Olympics, Athens, so forth and so on, you know, they would have the discus in, in different events. And, you know, individuals, you know, if, you, if, if it was a beyond the usual mark, they would use this Greek expression. What God intends to do for you and I is to pick us up out of the situation or circumstance that we may find ourselves in right now and throw us beyond the usual mark. Maybe in your family no one ever finished college. Maybe in your family people struggle financially. Maybe in your family divorce ran rampant. Maybe in your family sickness and disease had its course. But I'm here to tell you what God is doing in you and in Faith Family Church is picking you up out of whatever situation you may find yourself in and catapulting you, throwing you beyond the usual mark in life when you ask the question well how is he going to do it I believe that he tells us how it was done in his life well if we see the precedent set in scripture then we can know how is it going to be done in our lives he said it in verse 1 it is doubtless for me and it's not profitable for me to boast I will it is doubtless I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord I don't want this to be my vision for your life I want you to see this as God's vision your vision of life praise God I don't want this message I don't want this word I don't want this prophetic utterance to be my revelation I'm challenging you over the next several weeks that you get this so in your heart that you're expecting you're believing do I have a church that I can preach in you're looking for God to pick you up and throw you beyond the usual mark. It's usual for somebody to borrow to get a car or to, to, to use credit for this or that. But God wants to pick you up out of that situation and use you as an example to say that it is his will that you may prosper. You are going to be financially benefited by prophetic utterances that come from the Lord. If you believe it, he'll cause you to reign in a new level of life. Hallelujah. So, 
I'll be dealing with that. But as I, I, I got to looking for, Lord, what do you want me to minister for today? We'll, we'll have plenty of time to chew on all of these parts and scriptures. The thought that came is what's on your next level. There is a next level for your life. But what's on your next level? As I begin to look to the Lord for myself, for our congregation, our family, amen, for you, I saw three good things that are on your next level. Now, again, it's not enough for me to see it for you. I'm asking you, what's on your next level? And we're going to look about it. We're going to look at it today. Three good things. But then also saw three tough things that are on our next level. So we're just going to dive into this today. Say it out loud. Good times and tough times are yet to come. Now, that's not something that you naturally get excited about, but it's what I received from the Lord. Amen. There are good times that are ahead of us, and there are some tough times that are ahead of us. If you've got something to write with, I want you to write these six things down that I believe the Lord's revealed in my heart that are on our next level. Promotion is on our next level. Increase is on our next level. Abundance is on our next level. How many of y'all know that's good times? But then there's also three tough things that are on our next level. Prevention, which we'll talk about. Affliction, which we'll talk about. And persecution. Now let me give you some scriptures. I believe with all my heart this is a year of promotion. There are some of you that have been working on your job when you were expecting in 2020. You were right at that place of promotion. And sure enough, this thing hit. And what you thought, you were just thankful to have a job. There were folks that were let go. There were people that were furloughed. And you're just ending up this year thankful that you got a job. What I'm here to prophesy to you is that promotion is on your next level. When God's saying that he is elevating you, bringing you up to a new level, and to higher heights, I see him also saying there is promotion for you in your future. There's some of you listening right now that there's going to be a promotion of marital status in your life. Presently, you're unmarried. There's going to be a promotion. I've experienced one of those. Hallelujah. Amen. And indeed, it is a promotion to go from unmarried to being married I don't know about you, but I'm excited about this. You see, the Bible says in Psalm 75, stanza 6 in the New King, King James, for exaltation comes neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south, but God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts another. If you look at this in the King James Bible, it says that for promotion comes not from the east, the west, the north, or the south. It comes from the Lord. God is the judge. God is the one that gives, gives out promotions. You might think it was your boss. You might think it was the supervisor. You might think it was your education. You might think it was your good looks. But it is God, hallelujah, who puts up one and sets down another. And I'm believing with all of my heart there are going to be a number of victory stories that come up out of Faith Family Church in this next few months and in this next year that I I've got a promotion, Pastor. I went from renting to owning. I went from driving debt with, with, but now I'm driving debt free. Come on, somebody. I believe there's a promotion for you in your future. Somebody say amen. What else is in your future? What's on your next level? I'm writing this down. I don't know what's on your next level. If I were you, I might write these same things down and let the Lord reveal it to you. But I also see him saying that there's increase on your next level. He's, he's about to elevate you, pick you up and throw you up to another level, lift you up higher. Well, what's going to be there when you get there? The Lord has increase on his mind for you and for your family. So 
Psalm 115 stanza 12 says, the Lord has been mindful of us. He has watched you suffer. He has watched you struggle. He's watched you go through tough times. Through, um, you can put it back up on me now. Come on. He's watched you struggle. He's watched you suffer. He's watched you go through tough times in 2020. But I'm here to tell you, I've got a word for you, Brother John. God has been mindful of you. He has not forgotten the tears that you have cried, the losses that you have experienced, and he has been mindful of us, and he will bless us. He will bless you. We said it at the end of last year. Never go through something without, without commanding the blessing of God upon your life. Jacob wrestled with God, and he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Never go through something. If 2020 was tough, if it was a hard time, if it was a difficult time, then you ought to be expecting the blessing of God to be upon your life. And guess what, child of God? What God blesses, he also increases. The Bible said in Psalm 115, stanza 12, that the Lord has been mindful full of us. He will bless us. He'll bless the house of Israel. He'll bless the house of Aaron. He'll bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. Is there anybody in this church that fears the Lord? Is there anybody online that fears the Lord? Then God's got blessing in your future, and blessing always brings about increase. Here, may you be blessed by the Lord. Oh, I missed it. May the Lord give you increase more and more, you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. Oh. God's got increase on his mind. I'm writing it down. I'm writing it down. There will be promotion in my life. There will be increase in my life. Anybody else taking that for them? For those of you online, put it in the comments. Promotion is on my next level. Increase is on my next level. And guess what else he said to me? Abundance is on my next level. I'll have to skip that one. Amen. All right. Um, so the last one is abundance. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always have an all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. In Ephesians 3.20, this is the kind of year you're going to have. is an Ephesians 3.20 kind of year. Now unto him is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Amen. God has abundance on your next level. Say it out loud. Promotion, increase, abundance. Um, what's sad is we don't have our own facility. I have to rush this message because we have to pack up all this stuff, put it in our trailers, and be out of this place in less than 60 minutes. I can't take the time to, to get it out. You might say, well, maybe I messed up and spent too much time on the mini message. You know, well, it was a word for you, you know, and, and we're struggling uh, in our thoughts, you know, and it, it makes, hard, makes it hard for me to say what I have to say because, you know, it's almost like you don't really want to hear that, right, about prospering. But God's got prosperity on his mind concerning you. He's got abundance. Amen. Amen. Um, have you all ever heard new level, new devil? Yeah, a lot of people. I used to hate to hear that growing up. I've been in church, around church for a long time. And um, people quote that like it's the Bible. <laughs> you can't find that in the Bible. New level, new devil. Um, so as I was looking into 2020 with the Lord, um, I saw that we would be coming up to another level. This thought came to mind, not saying it was from the Lord, but people say that, you know, new level, new devil. It almost makes you like want to stay on the level that you're on. You can play something softly now. Uh, it, it almost makes you want to say because you don't want to deal with no new devil. Right? <laughs> but what I've discovered in life is that there's a devil on every level. That's true. The thief cotton cometh not but for to steal, to kill, 
and to destroy. He said, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. There are good times, some really, really good times in front of us. There's promotion in front of us. There's increase in front of us. And there's abundance in front of us. But there's also some tough times that are coming in 2021 that I, I see in the spirit. Tough times in our individual lives. Amen. But there's no worries. He, we are more than conquerors. That means no matter what battle we fight. Amen. No matter what we go through. No matter how tough it is. He's going to bring us out victorious and on the other side. The Bible tells us the truth. In Mark chapter 4 verse 14. The sower sows the word. He goes on to say these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately. When they heard the word, Satan comes immediately and steals the word that was sown in their hearts. Then he says, and these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately they receive it with gladness. For those of you that are online, um, I'm preaching a prophetic word. I, I, I thought that I could flow in a different way and I just had to cut that off and just you know, give it to you straight and maybe we can get excited about it later. But when a prophetic message goes forth like that, Satan comes immediately. There were some people that started this broadcast that are not on right now. So they, 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 Satan was able to steal increase and promotion and abundance. The will of God is not automatic. God's got his part, but you got your part. And you know what your part is? You got to believe the prophets and it'll benefit you financially. It'll benefit you spiritually. It'll benefit you in every area of your life. But you've got to be firmly persuaded no matter what comes. Satan is coming after this word, elevation. He wants that to be a joke in your life. He wants you to let go of it in June or July or in August. He wants you to give up the idea of being promoted in your marital status by the time you hit to September, October, and November. But it starts today. Don't let him steal the word. He wants to prevent you from hearing the word. Ah, man, I might have to bring it back up later. Um, so there's a devil on every level. Go back to Acts chapter 20 and verse 22. And see, now I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there. And see now, but none of these things move me. Okay, verse 23. Except that the Holy Spirit in every city testifies that chains and tribulations in the King James it says bonds and afflictions await me verse 24 says but none of these things move me nor do I count my life dear to myself so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I have received from the Lord to testify of the gospel of the grace of God listen to what he said he said the Holy Ghost from city to city has been witnessing on the inside of me of what the future looks like for my and your life. I can say in the same way as your pastor, as a privilege that I have to stand in this office to be Godward on your behalf. I can't stay up, stand up here and say that 2021 is going to be a year without tough times. There are going to be some tough times in it. But notice what Paul said. Paul said that the Holy Ghost was testifying that bonds and afflictions awaited him. Think about that word affliction because it's one of the three things that are on our next level. Prevention. Satan coming to take away the word. He's going to try to prevent you from getting to church. He's already successfully done that for hundreds of us, right? 
right? He's going to try to prevent you. I can't tell you the number of Faith Family Church that have not heard the messages over the last six to nine months because of technological issues and they just kind of give up hope and because, you know, there was a few technical issues and so now the enemy was able to steal the next two or three weeks of word from them and now they are without the revelation of that word that will bring about the manifestation that God would for their life. Satan comes immediately for the word. He doesn't want you to hear this. Any of it. He's going to try to prevent you from being promoted. How does he do that? He messes with your boss? No. He messes with your wife? No. He messes with this person? No. He steals the word from you. Preaching good today. What else does he do? Satan comes immediately to steal away the word. Then it says, there's some that receive the word, but afterwards, when afflictions and persecutions arise for the sake of the word if he can't keep you from hearing it then he'll bring up these other two situations to keep you from believing it what is affliction take a note of it I might have to review this next week affliction is pressure brought on by circumstances that means what's on your next level there's gonna be some circumstances that arise that are gonna bring some pressure There'll be a bill that pops up and you're like, man, I wasn't expecting this. There'll be, you know, some family situation that comes up. I wasn't expecting it. Uh, a spirit of depression can come against you. And you can think, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just never going to get married. I mean, there, it'd be a better chance for me to be struck by lightning than for me to get married. Or for my marriage to be better than what it is right now. And when that pressure comes, it's coming to steal the word elevation. Am I preaching good today? It's coming to steal the word elevation from your heart. Pressure brought on by circumstances. The last one is persecution. Satan, these are these three things that he uses outwardly. He'll either keep you from even hearing this word. Like, for example, he's already got it planned for some of you not to hear this next week. He's already got a plan for some of you to skip the little mini messages about there is no middle class and just listen to the main message. He'll keep some of you from being online on Wednesday night live where just as much power and anointing and effort and hearing from God comes forth to give you a word. He'll try to prevent it. If you do get it, then he'll try to afflict you with circumstance, not sickness and disease. Sickness and disease is affliction, a situation that the enemy brings, not God. But particularly pressure brought on by all circumstances, not just sickness and disease. And if that doesn't get you to let go of that word, he'll use pressure brought on by people. Child not acting right, boss loses mind. Somebody say something to you, make you want to cuss. I said, make you want to cuss. <laughs> we need our own building. Hey, Amen. Manifested. It's already done. Y'all stand up with me. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 18, Therefore we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again. But Satan hindered us. Satan what? Hindered us. He prevented. He, pre he prevented us from getting to you. Does Satan have the ability to hinder or prevent you getting the word from God? Oh, absolutely. He was working today, working today to hinder the flow of anointing upon the word of God from getting to you time and again. Psalm 34, 19 says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. 
There's some afflictions on your next level. What are afflictions? Pressure brought on by circumstances, situations, things that pop up dealing with, right? Including sickness and disease, symptoms of it, right? He'll try to afflict you physically to get you to let go of that word. And then 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12 says, Yes, all who desire to live like God in this life, in Christ Jesus, will have a perfect, you know, uh, trouble-free life. Is that what it said? All who desire. I mean, is anybody here desire to live like God, live godly, right? Not running in the streets, you know, not, not you know, living a, a wretched life. But the Bible, it says all somebody say all who desire to live godly will suffer persecution what's persecution pressure brought on by people Uh, I might have to review this again next week Uh, we've already prayed for those that would to give their life to the Lord Jesus we welcome you into our faith family I will not let you go before I bless you And so I speak this blessing over you. If you would raise one hand before the Lord. We're not done. We'll pick up next week. 